Ali and Jordan are huddled around a laptop. Sam is looking around the room, measuring up the walls. This is the final climactic sentence. We need to leave the reader feeling like there's a sense of resolution, but without providing obvious answers. So they walk away from our book, re-evaluating what they thought they knew. Wow. That's better than anything I could come up with, Ali. <laughs> How about this? Yeah. That's it. <laughs> Guys, do you think it would look best here? What? The Man Booker Prize. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, maybe for that final moment, if I just switch the syntax into the third person... Is it uh, a plaque? Or some kind of certificate? Or you know when you sell a million records, you get a golden record? Okay. Do they give you a golden book? I think we're though. As long as you think we're though. You know what, Jordan? I think we might be. <laughs> what have you done? We, we've finished the novel, Sam. We've... We finished it. Great, let's submit it to Mr. Man Booker. No, it's not actually finished. Now we need to reread it and make notes of things we'd like to develop or cut. No, and... now we need to establish the order our names go on the cover. Okay. <laughs> Surely just alphabetical. <laughs> Ali Allison, Jordan Jordanson, Sam Sampson. That sounds reasonable. Oh, come on, Ali, take a risk. Put my name first. <laughs> he does make a good point, Ali. Actually, maybe it should be my name, then Jordan, then yours, Ali. After all, you only really came onto this project at the end to help us finish it <laughs> off. I've been working on this for six months. Yeah, but we've been working on it our whole lives. <laughs> Have we? Well, three oh, years. Sam, I don't... <laughs> Sam, I don't care where my name goes on the cover. But if I did, then I'd be telling you that there's no way you're putting my name last. This book would never have been finished without me. Well, it would never have existed without me. Without you? That's right, without us. Look, we're all tired. Let's leave it here and pick it up in the morning. Christ, Ali, have you no perspective? The man booker deadline's tomorrow. If we don't send it in now, we can kiss goodbye to that golden book. Sam, we don't even have a publisher yet. And redrafting is not exactly a radical writing concept. <laughs> right, Jordan? Hmm? I think you'll find, Ali, that Jordan is my friend and will take my side whenever I tell him to. Like now. Well, hey, 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 you know, I'm, I'm not easily swayed. I'm, I'm capable of making my own mind. No, you're not. No, no, you are not. Sam, stop being so unprofessional. Hmm. 8.32 p.m. unprofessional. Sam, what is that? Oh, this. This is my insult list. It makes holding grudges easier. And now you're on it. Congratulations, Ali, if that's even your real name. I bet you changed it so you can go first in the cover of books. Oh, God, you're so childish. No, you're childish. 8.33 p.m., childish. Oh. And for your information, I don't need you. I've never needed you. You're only here because someone needs to help Jordan. I'm quite childish. Well, I think mean, that's because I'm a Capricorn. All I'm saying is that our book doesn't need any more work. We are finished. This is done. No more talking anyone. The man Booker is calling out. No time left for us to doubt my ability and skill. We can make the deadline still. Just send it as it is. Just send it in like this. Believe me, I know that I am right. I know best. Trust in me. Relax and have some faith. Nothing else comes close to it If you think it's bloated That's rude, we all wrote it But no one could deny my massive part In this stunning work of art So give up the fight We're sending it tonight I 
know I am going far When the adaptation wins an Oscar My name up in neon lights Producers begging me for the rights When Stephen King says, can I talk to you? I'll say, dude, get to the back of the queue And if he then starts whining I'll tell him, mate, leave it, it's been years since The Shining We'll end every war with our big book tour. That's how great this is. And when every home has this epic tome, I'll have made history. History. Because this is the best thing ever written since the dawn of creation. Forget the Magna Carta, that was just for starters. This will be the book that won't go out of print. So when will you just take the hint? This book is the one, just send it as it is. Cause it's the best damn thing. So send I'll tell you what, why don't we let Jordan decide what to do? Print it, send it off and win the Man Booker Prize. Or redraft it. Come on, Jordan. Do you trust me, your friend for life, or this stranger you've lived with for six months? <laughs> hmm. Stranger? I've been a better friend to you in these past six months than Sam has in his entire life. Oh, dude, stop shouting. Oh, I can't make my mind up. Well, obviously, he agreed with me. Uh, he didn't agree with you. He just couldn't bear telling you that he didn't believe your stupid rhetoric. I'm sorry to break it to you, Sam, but for the first time in your life, Jordan isn't just blindly following you. We all know what's going to happen when Jordan comes back through that door. This is the best thing ever written. I know because I made a decision, an actual decision. Ba -doo -ba -doo -ba -doo. A real decision, and I know. Are we, are we not still doing that bit? No. This is the best thing ever made Puts all others in the shade It is perfect Maybe too perfect And when there are no stars left in the sky The universe implodes and dies This work will remain As the best damn thing we're sending it in Cause it's the best thing ever written No, Jordan, what are you doing? Let me explain something to you, Ali. This is a democracy. We'll put it to a vote. Hands up who thinks this is the best thing ever written. Oh, this is so stupid. And all those against? Go on. Well, I don't have a degree in advanced mathematics or political process, but I think we have a winner. But, Sam... It's a democracy, Ali. Two to one. Jordan, <laughs> print it. Guys. It's gone. Blackouts. Lights up. Everyone is panicking. I can't believe you've fucking done this. But this isn't my fucking fault. This is your fucking fault. Well, if there's anyone to blame, it's Jordan. Hey. Jordan, have you checked my documents? What? My documents. Your documents? No, my documents. Your documents? No, my documents. <laughs> my documents? My documents. Oh, look, my documents. That's so cleverly named. So this is where all my documents go. Is it there? No, it's not there. Look in the recycle bin. On the computer! <laughs> oh, it's not there either. Have you tried downloads? Yes. Desktop? Yes. Google Docs? Yes. Google Sheets? Yes. Dropbox? Yes. We transfer? Yes. The cloud? Yes. <laughs> Gmail? Yes. Hotmail? Yes. Yahoo Mail? Yes. Rocket Mail? Yes. AOL? Yes. BT Internet Mail? Yes. YouTube? Yes. Vimeo? Yes. Facebook? Yes. Google Plus? Yes. MySpace? Yes. Bebo? Yes. MSN? Yes. Mail Online? Yes. Jordan, are you even checking these places? No. <laughs> I mean, 
the, the computer stopped working after I checked your documents. My documents? <laughs> yeah, your documents, but I didn't want you to get angry. For fuck's sake, that's it then. We're going to have to start again. Well done, everyone. Uh, look, it's not the end of the world. I've got really extensive notes. We can just rewrite it all from there onto the computer. Jordan, pass me that notebook. Wait. This is just a list of names and insults. Oh, sorry, that's one of mine. God, you're so petty. 8.36pm, petty! <laughs> Jordan, pass me the other notebook. Uh, no, this isn't the right one either. All the pages are blank. Well, this was the only notebook there. And it's got your name on it. But I definitely took notes. Hundreds of pages of notes. Well, clearly not. No, you don't understand. The words have literally... disappeared. That is literally impossible. You're being ridiculous. Oh, you are so infuriating! Don't throw a book at me, particularly Jilly Cooper's Riding Hard. Oh, oh, oh that's my favourite. It's very erotic. It's about a stable hand who falls in love with a horse. What the fuck? This is completely empty as well. No, that can't be right. I, d I definitely remember it having words. Fuck. Yeah, that was one of them. No, I mean, fuck, where have the fucking words gone? All my fan fiction is blank as well. Oh, this copy of Twilight's blank too. <gasps> Not my new moon. Hang on, Nicholas Nickelbig <laughs> has, still has words. Uh, so does this Geoffrey Archer. Oh my God, no, wait. The words are disappearing. Guys, I think I know Shut what up, I... Jordan, we don't have the time. The man booker deadline's tomorrow. This is the time we set aside to play with fonts and margins, not work out why all the words are suddenly and mysteriously deleting themselves from all these books. Whatever happened to these books is the same thing that happened to our novel. Oh, guys, I, I think this might have something to do with what I studied at university. Oh, Christ, you're not going on about those ridiculous literology modules with that weird professor. <laughs> professor Wick is not weird. She was just a misunderstood visionary. We all understood her. We understood that she was a complete nutter. Jordan, what on earth is literology? Well, when Sam and I were English undergraduates together, there was this professor, Professor Flimsywick. The faculty staff considered her a bit unconventional. Considered her a bit unstable. Her idea was to study literature using scientific methods. She called this literology. Which is the idea that literature can be analysed quantitatively and objectively. That all fiction can be categorised, classified and ranked in terms of quality. But you can't objectively rank literature. This obviously has nothing to do with the disappearing books. It does. Everything that has disappeared falls into the bottom 1% of that hierarchy. It's the lowest of the low. Bottom of the barrel. Shit on your shoe, awful. Aside from our book. Obviously, aside from our book. Maybe it was too good. <laughs> or maybe it was structurally flawed, littered with spelling mistakes, and in desperate need of a redraft! Fuck off. And, <laughs> and this is only the beginning. Soon, it won't just be the bottom 1% that disappears, it'll be the bottom 100%. Isn't the bottom 100% just everything? Exactly. <laughs> oh my god. Jordan doesn't know what he's talking about. I do. You always think you're right about things, and you never are. With the greatest of respect, you're a moron. Oh. I know that I've been wrong before. My judgment has been questionable at times. Maybe all the time. I don't profess to have the greatest mind. But when I know in my heart Something's right, I have to start Believe my gut and you will see You should put your trust in me Why on earth should we believe you? You're always wrong! There was that time I joined a scary cult Who convinced me that the world was going to end I gave them all of my possessions But the world didn't end I tried to get my stuff back, but it had all been sold. The cult expelled me, they threw me out. I was left out in the cold. So I joined another cult who said the world was going to end, but on a different day. We stood outside the tube shouting at commuters, but the world didn't end again. 
thought I belonged, I thought that I'd won Champion of the apocalypse, I was wrong about scary calls But I'm right about this It was back in 2009 when I bought myself a bit of Bitcoin coin Back then they weren't worth much, I had a couple of thousand then it occurred to me to buy Shrek 3 on an HD DVD It cost me all of my Bitcoin and I only watched it once If I hadn't blown my lord on a HD DVD that I'd just give to that cult I'd be a Bitcoin millionaire I could buy Shrek on Blu-ray My fortune gone, my HD DVD gone I'd buy a new one where I I was wrong about cults and Bitcoin But I'm right about this I thought the earth was flat I thought the pyramids were holograms My Trump University degree Isn't worth a penny Though it cost me ten grand I love my Sega Dreamcast Was an early adopter of the Google Glass. I don't think Lance Armstrong's a cheat He was bitten by a radioactive bicycle Yes, I've been wrong, so consistently wrong My life littered with mistakes I was wrong about cults and Bitcoin Earth and uni, HD DVDs, Google Glass Holograms, Sega Dreamcast, Lance Armstrong Northern Rock, PPI, Nigerian Princes, Exploding Samsungs, Bamba Gascoigne, Avocados, Penn and Teller, The Olympics, The Illuminati, Voting Remain, but I'm dying about this! <laughs> All he did was list things he got wrong. I know. <laughs> then why are you going with his plan? I don't know, Sam. I guess because it's a democracy. Two to one. <laughs> Blackout. Lights up. We're inside a dimly lit room. Strange machines whir and flash. The door creaks open and Jordan, Ali and Sam enter. Who's there? Oh, uh, excuse me, Professor Wick. Uh, it's me, your favourite student. Oh, Joanna Whittington? <laughs> no, it's Jordan. Who? You remember me? Jordan. Jordan Jordanson. I was in the class of 2012. I took your modules in literology and they changed my life, which I told you multiple times. Not ringing any bells. I was the only student on your class trip to that large Hadron Quarter collider. No. Nope. You tried to collide two books together, but instead you collided one book with me. We had to go to hospital. Not a sausage. But on the way to the hospital, we fell down that alp. It's not jogging the noggin. And we were trapped in that ravine. It took the rescue teams two months to find us. We survived on a diet of alpine rats and that animal you shot, which looked a lot like our guide. Nope. Oh, I guess maybe your memory, you know, just isn't what it used to be. <laughs> Professor, this is my friend, Sam. Oh, yes. I know you. You're Sam Samuel Sampson. We've met once on the 21st of October 2009 at the American Literature Symposium in Halifax. You were at the bar, drinking a small glass of, of Merlot, 175 milliliter glass, from a small organic supplier in a village on the Chilean Bolivian border. Your hair was a quarter of an inch longer than it is now. Oh, and you've changed your deodorant brand! Oh. Well, you won't know me, Professor, but my name is Ali Allison, and before we begin, I want to clarify that my presence here does not mean I believe any of your literology nonsense. Well, if my theories are nonsense, explain this. Oh, that's the film Inception. It's about dreams. Thank you. I've been trying to figure that out for years. <laughs> uh, but what I really meant to hold up was this. And that's a book. Very observant. But look, all the pages, they're blank. Something has occurred and all of literature is disappearing, which proves my theory is correct. Your theory is why we're here, Professor. We think we're responsible for what's happening. Well, that's ridiculous. How could you have possibly caused all of this? 
Last night we finished writing our book and as soon as we finished it, it instantly disappeared. Uh, did you check my documents? <laughs> no, I checked Sam's documents. No, my documents. I didn't check your documents. We've already done this. <laughs> and then we started checking other books and my collection of Last of the Summer Wine fan fiction had disappeared. And then I remembered your hierarchy of literature. Yes, my scientifically correct ranking of every book ever. But for your book to be responsible for all this, well, it would need to be the worst thing ever written. Well, then it can't be our book. Ours is the best thing ever written. <laughs> Let me ask you one question. At what time did you finish your book? Oh, 8.32 p.m. I remember because of Sam's stupid notepad. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no! <laughs> what, Professor? This is your fault. 8.32 p.m. is when this all began. I'm sorry, Professor, I don't understand what's going on. Oh, let me explain. <laughs> Every time a new book is completed, all of its words go to an alternate dimension. The literary universe! Pass, pass. <laughs> or, as I like to call it, the literaverse. This universe is where every story exists. When you read a book, what you're actually doing is reading a copy of those words direct from the literaverse. <coughs> like the cloud. No, this is much simpler. So, you're saying if something happens to a book in the literaverse, the same thing happens to every copy of that book in our universe? Exactly. How do you know all this? I've spent my entire life studying the literaverse. No one at the university believed me when I said it existed, but where are they now? At the university. Yes, but where am I? In a shed. <laughs> we don't have time for this! 10.31 a.m. slapped! But I always feared that the literaverse could be vulnerable. Vulnerable to a black hole. While in our universe black holes form from imploding stars, in the literaverse a black hole is caused by an imploding book. What? A book so terrible it quite literally rips apart the fabric of the literaverse. A book of such staggeringly awful prose, limp analogies, misplaced apostrophes, and, most of all, awful narrative inconsistencies. You mean plot holes? <gasps> yes! <laughs> plot holes that defy time and logic to such a degree that they would tear apart the very fabric of literature itself. Oh, well that explains everything. <laughs> Thanks for your time, Professor. Flimsy, that's ridiculous. You're not suggesting our book is so terrible it is destroying the literaverse. No, I'm not suggesting it. Oh, good. I'm saying it! <gasps> I know your book is responsible because for the past 16 years I have been building this collection of machines to alert me to such a moment. And they all started going off at 8.32pm last night. No, it turns out that none of them work and I've wasted 16 years of my life. <laughs> but I noticed at 8.32pm the words started to disappear from the erotic novel I was reading on the toilet. So it was us. Yes. <laughs> if we don't do something, all of literature will disappear forever. Well, I guess I can live in a world without books. And also humanity in the world as we know it. What? But don't focus too much on that. Oh, please, Professor, there must be something we can do. There is a way to stop the black hole. I have the ability to send someone into the literaverse. Now, this will be very dangerous, and whoever goes will almost certainly die. I would go myself, but I've got a bit of a bad back. Oh, our backs are fine. Great! Once you're in the literaverse, you will need to track down your book. And bring it back to reality so we can submit it for the Man Booker Prize. And destroy it so no one can read your awful book ever again. And how do you propose to send us into the literaverse, Professor? With this. Flimsy points at a machine. Some toast pops out. <laughs> That's a toaster. Sorry. With that. <laughs> this machine will transport you through dimensions to the literaverse. Hopefully. I mean, none of my other machines work, but I've got a pretty good feeling about this one. Flimsy pats it, and the front falls off. <laughs> Let me get that. <laughs> Flimsy tapes the machine up. Well, this seems fucking stupid. Oh, look, I know Flimsy might seem a bit eccentric, but she knows what she's talking about. Uh, Flimsy is licking her machine. <laughs> By the sounds of things, we're going to die anyway, so we might as well give it a shot. You do what you want, but I'm going to stay here and start writing a new book. A better book. But I thought there was nothing better than our book. God damn it, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Please, Sam. Do it for me. I'm not doing it for you. Do it for you, then. 
Fine, I'll do it for me. Well, the machine's fixed. To have even the slightest chance of surviving your journey, you'll need to read the instructions. But unfortunately, all the words have disappeared. Today is not the day I wanted it to be when I woke up. There is one thing I can give you. These books. These three books will let you know how much time you have until the plot hole black hole absorbs all of literature. And humanity. Yes, I said that. This is the first book. It's a piece of trash and its words are already disappearing. Here. This is a bang average thriller, debuted at number four on the New York Times bestseller list, described in the Telegraph as full of passion. <laughs> Once its words begin to fade, you'll know you don't have long. And this. This is the best book ever written. Which you're giving to me makes sense. What book <laughs> is it, Professor? The Great Gatsby. Oh, yeah. A bridge version. Oh. This is mankind's best work of fiction. What did they take out from the original? We'll never know. The full version of the book was one of the first to disappear. When the words begin to fade from this pearl of a book, you'll really be in the shit. Ready? As will ever be. Whose will ever be? Let's go! Get ready to go to a place far beyond anything you can conceive. If you put your minds to it and trust in yourself, there's nothing that you can't achieve. It's a black hole, you will be taken on a plot hole, black hole. Go to the black hole, your job is to destroy the plot hole, black hole. Plot hole, black hole. Plot hole, black hole. of all my advanced machines and ignore all their dangerous flaws. What do you mean dangerous? Black hole! Don't think too hard about it. Blood of black hole. Go to the black hole. Chances are you'll be killed by the blood of black hole. Blood of black hole. Blood of black hole. The task is great and you seem small. like a library to me. It's like the one Flimsy used to take us to at university. Except this one has books. Oh, it's going to take forever to find our novel. Shh. Don't tell me to shush, Sam. I didn't tell you to shush. Shh. Don't you shush me, Ali. I didn't. Well, who said shh? I did. Oh, shh. Who are you? You can't be here. Why? Oh, is, it, is it dangerous? No, we close at five. Mm -hmm. What is this place? Isn't it obvious? This is... A library? No. It's the Literaverse. But the human mind is incapable of processing what literature in its purest form looks like, so you perceive it as a library. So if this isn't a library, why are you telling us to shush? I find you very irritating. <laughs> <laughs> you look a lot like Professor Wick. Mm, that is no coincidence. <laughs> Just like this universe, your minds are incapable of seeing my true form, so you view me as the last person you saw. 
You look like toast. Or the last thing you perceive to be a person. <laughs> so, what are you? I am the High Archivist, the guardian of all literature, the keeper of all books, the protector of all texts. Oh, well, we need your help. We have to find our book. Oh, your writers. <laughs> Well, as I said, we close at five, or what you perceive to be five, mm -hmm. so you'll have to come back tomorrow. Or what you perceive as tomorrow, which for me was actually yesterday. <laughs> but that doesn't make any sense. Shh! Hi, Archivist, you don't understand. If, if we don't find our book quickly, all of literature will be destroyed. What? We've written a book. The best book ever written. Shh! What I perceive to be 5 or 6 p.m. Shushed! <laughs> <laughs> the book we've written... It's destroying all of literature. <laughs> destroying all of literature? Yes. I don't believe you. I've been here for thousands of what you perceive as years, and I've never heard of anything capable of such unbelievable destruction. Oh, well, look at this book. It's completely blank. Oh, my God. And the words are beginning to fade from my bang average thriller. Now I'll never know why that girl had a dragon tattoo. <laughs> all of literature really is being destroyed. Yes. My life's work. Everybody has a purpose. This one's mine. I read every work of fiction in my time. Shakespeare and Shelley, Atwood and King, Zadie Smith and Rudyard Kipling. Who? <laughs> Do you mean Rudyard Kipling? I've only seen it written down. <laughs> Millions of journeys with countless new writers, each tale alike but uniquely unique. Over and over, no finish line, no mountain peak, just me and the books, with endless time stretched out ahead of me. My own and never ending story. Literally, so even though I have already seen every story and tale ever dreamed, when you open a book hooked from the first line, when you're dancing through chapters and it seems to stop time in this brand new book, but there will always be a brand new Makes me want to stand up on the table or climb up to the rooftops or just find a very high place and open my mouth and scream. I hate books!
not leave me alone day in, day out, never ending, never changing, driving me insane. I hate every single bird. Archivist. Will I help you get back your book? Yes. The book that's destroying this world that I hate? Yes. The book that will free me from this horrific existence? Yeah, that book. No. Oh. But if you three want to find the books yourselves, then I know where you need to go. Where? You need to go to the three doors of all the dare! Wow, well, that... That sounds dangerous. Sorry, I meant the three doors all the way over there! <laughs> Thanks. Shh! <laughs> ah! They'll never find their book where I've said them. Good luck saving literature now! <laughs> Shh! <laughs> Blackouts. Lights up. The three appear opposite three doors. This must be where we're going to find our book. But the High Archivist said she wasn't going to help us. She said a lot of things, but I think we can all agree that she loves books, loves the Literaverse, and has never sung a song in her life. <sighs> Look, the book must be behind one of these three doors. But how do we know which door? And how do we know it's not a trap? And how do we know which door? Well, I'm going through that door because that's the one I saw first. Hold on, let's think about this. It makes more sense for it to be the middle door, because it's usually the middle door in traditional poems and riddles and... Wait, Sam! Why? He always does this. I don't know why I agreed to work with him. The selfish, self-entitled prick! I can't believe he's left me alone. Here. I'm still here. Yeah, of course you are, Jordan, because that's what you do. You're always just... there. What door do you want to go through, Jordan? Why don't we give, you give us your opinion? Well, at first I wanted to go through the door that Sam went through, but but now I want to go through the door that you want to go through. Oh, make up your own mind for once in your life! Blackout. Lights up on Ali. Hello? Sam? Jordan? Hi, Archivist? Shh. Is anyone there? To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether tis nobler in the mind. Excuse me, sire. Sire? It's <laughs> a weird thing to say. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, could you tell me where I am? Something's rotten in the state of Denmark. Are you answering my question? That's weird. That's not how you say question. Forsooth, I see you can converse in verse. I cannot speak in verse. That's a mistake. Hang on a sec. I think you might be right. <coughs> a certain book I do come here to seek. Mayhap you've seen the tome of which I speak. My help I'd give if only I could act. I wouldeth if I couldeth. But I canteth, so I shanteth. <laughs> Tis strange that I love speaking much in verse, when to the plainest ear it might seem dull. Hold on. That's it. Perhaps this does reflect my love of what is ordered and correct. This must be why I've been sent to this place. To get our book back, I must play it safe. Blackout. 
lights up on Jordan. He's holding a quill, a large book, and a candle. Dearest friends, it has been a long time since I put quill to paper. At the time of writing, I find myself in most unamenable and abhorrent conditions, with nothing to write on except for this massive book that I found in the corner of my chamber, situate in what appears to be the Gothic Tower of the Byzantine. My cell is darker than a than a really dark thing, like a raven or, um, or the inside of a shoe. But I fear I cannot write further because I keep spelling it farther. So I'll just write much more, as in the words much more, not, not actually writing much more, because as I said, I, I fear I cannot write farther. There is a noise without. Whatever imprisons me draws near. Farewell, dear friends. Your most faithful, loyal, and humble servant, Jordan Jordanson. Now, where do I press send? Hello, Jordan. The night is close at hand. The children of the woods are ready to sup. Now, polish my teeth. Do I do this for you every eventide? Yes! You have not the will nor the nerve to defy me and my teeth. No, you're, you're right. Oh, Jordan, you're my favorite victim. <laughs> I mean friend, I mean victim. <laughs> now excuse me, I'm off to run a bath filled with blood, orange and jasmine bubble bath. <laughs> Dearest friends, it's not actually been that long since I last put quill to paper. In <laughs> fact, I'm writing on the back of the last letter I wrote to you. I now know that the identity of my perpetual tormentor he seems nice. <laughs> I realise now that if I'm to get back our book, then I must play the victim to this monster and, and submit to his every whim and command. Jordan! I need you to come and grab my toenails! Coming! <laughs> B-R-B. <laughs> Blackout. Lights up on Sam. Hey! Hey! Who are you? Where are we? My name is Katniss Everdeen, representative <laughs> of District 12, and I fight to liberate our people from the tyranny of Pan Am, so I really can't stop or I'll- Oh! She's shot by an arrow. <laughs> oh, I'm in the Hunger Games. I'd rather die being me than live being them! Oh my god, you're right. I'm perfect the way I am. If I'm going to find my book, I just need to keep doing what I'm doing. God, I love the message of young adult fiction. Help me! But if I help you, that wouldn't be being true to myself. See ya! <laughs> Lights up on Ali. So look, the man returns Hamlet himself. Now might I do it, Pat. Now he is praying. And now I'll do it. And so he goes to heaven. Oh, look, he's come to kill old Claudius, his murdered father's kin and killer bee. No, up, sword, and know thou a more horrid hent. But he does waive the chance to do the deed. Procrastination will see him undone. This physic but prolongs thy sickly days. Sir, may I offer you some small advice? <laughs> Why dost thou stall when thou art good to go? Don't ask me how, but I do know your tale. If you do not act now, you are to die. But I did just follow your sage advice. I thought it'd be a risk to stab my kin. So I let mine uncle live a while, for it was you who said to play it safe. Playing it safe extends your agony. And the same logic doth apply to me. Dearest Prince of Denmark, we must take risks. So be it. I will slay all that I love. I must take risks! Blackout. Lights up on Jordan.
You catch me halfway through my letter. I'm beginning to suspect that my host is not as amiable as I once thought. The slappings have become beatings. The beatings have become stabbings, and then the stabbings have become infected. I'm regularly put to work on the most heinous of tasks, burying the corpses, feeding the bats, doing his laundry. Do you know how hard it is to get out blood on a 30 degree cycle? I digress. My host draws near. This could well be the end for me. But I realise I never ask how you are. <laughs> I grow hungry, Jordan. Tonight I sup on you. Oh, is it Tuesday already? <laughs> oh, all right. Do not try to resist. Oh. I will feast on your supple flesh and imbibe your crimson fluid, by which I mean your blood. Oh, yeah, 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 I know. Whatever's good for you. Oh, well, just so you know, I scratched myself on an iron gate a couple of weeks ago, so afterwards you should probably get yourself checked out. The night is approaching its close, and so I feast. Good night, sweet owlet. Oh, well, hold on a second, sorry. <laughs> you know, I, I just think I'm having second thoughts. I, I know I shouldn't question you, but have you considered that the blood would come out much better on a 40 degree cycle? Good idea. Well, Thank you, Jordan. Really? Someone actually listened to me. Maybe I don't need to blindly follow the whim of every person I meet. But can I still bite your neck? Sure. Oh, no, 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 wait. I, I don't think I want to die. Okay, you only had to say. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Vampire. I think we'll be friends forever. <laughs> Blackouts. <laughs> Lights up on Sam. I am so good at this. Distant sound of a cannon. Oh, there goes another one. There's really something in just doing whatever the hell you like and not caring about other people. I think it's just you and me left. I've realised I was wrong. It's not about being true to yourself. It's about doing the right thing. We can't both be crowned winner, so neither of us should be. Let's eat these poison berries together. Sure, we'll die, but we'll show the capital that the districts united shall never be defeated. Shit, you're right. This is the right thing to do. Together. Together. <coughs> Go goodbye! Psych! <laughs> the cannon goes off. I present the victor of the 74th Hunger Games, Sam Samuel Sampson. I win! Fuck you, I'm the greatest! I've learned absolutely nothing and I need to change in no way whatsoever. <laughs> I'm not right about much, but I'm right about this. I am great. I just won the fucking Hunger Games. I'm perfect as I am. There's no need for me to change. Change. If we're gonna save the book, these are the people we're gonna need. The same me If we're gonna save the book I'll save the world These are the people we're gonna need to be A brave me A bold me The same me If books have taught us anything People need to change 
to overcome their issues and their flaws, even though the settings might be strange. I'm still great. Nothing more to add. <laughs> In that book that Dickens penned, Scrooge loved Christmas. Bilbo Baggins and his ring Means I can conquer anything I don't need examples to prove I'm right So change is great Well tell that to the polar bears If we're gonna change our path I need to be the best person I can be. A different me. A different me. The same me. If we're gonna save the world, I'll change the world. Then we're gonna need to change our destiny. We'll do this as a three. No, just me. If we're gonna save the world, I'll save the world. find themselves back together on the fringe of the plot hole black hole. Sam! Ali! Oh my god, you're alive! Oh, I missed you so much! This is in Palham. Wait, were you not in Hamlet? No, I was in the Hunger Games. I got to poison someone with berries. It was great! Oh, I was in a castle with a vampire. Look at that, it must be the plot hole black hole! Yeah, listen, you can hear some of the lines from the books that have been sucked inside. <gasps> My Ginny Cooper! The black oh! hole's getting bigger! It must have consumed the books we were in! Look at the Great Gatsby, abridged! The words are almost all gone! We're into the final chapter! Oh, don't show me, I don't want any spoilers! We need to find our book! Otherwise, it's not just all of literature that's going to be destroyed! What else is going to disappear? Us! Remember? Not really. We're never going to find our book. There's nothing here. Dearest vampire, I write to you from the edge of the black hole, which swallowed the book that you were in, but then... Oh my God, guys. What? Guys, I've been writing with a feather. Jordan. <laughs> Oh, I found it, you know, when I was with that vampire. I've been writing letters on it. Oh my God, I can write! Have you read any of the book? Oh, I read the blurb. I, I didn't like the sound of it. This is our book! <gasps> oh my God, we wrote a book! <laughs> oh yeah, we, I remember now, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why we're here. We need to destroy the book! If we destroy the book, we destroy the black hole. Oh, it's too thick and badly written. You're doing it wrong. Give it here. What do we do? I have, I have one idea. Well, that will never work. No, Sam, listen to me. I think the solution has to be fire. No, no, Sam, wait. I know how to fix this. Fine, go on. What if we just stop it from being bad? I know where we went wrong, you know, the, there's one catastrophic plot hole that starts in the first chapter and runs pretty much until the last page. I think maybe if I take that out, it'll destroy the black hole. Jordan, forgive my lack of faith in you, but you're never right about anything. I was right about Flimsy. Well, even though you didn't believe in me. Even though I didn't believe in me. But you know what? I'm, I was right. So, I'm asking you now. You know, for the first time in your lives, to trust me, to put your faith in me, that I can do this. 
that I can save us. That can save the world. You're asking us to put our lives in your hands because you've got a hunch. Yeah. Oh, I, I know it's a bit of a risk. Oh my God. Dearest Prince of Denmark, we must take risks. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. I'm not the Prince of Denmark. I must take risks. Okay, Jordan. I trust you. Do it. Sam. Buddy. Oldest friend. Victor of the 74th Hunger Games. But you've been wrong about everything. I know, but... But I need you to believe in me. Just this once. Because if you don't believe in me, how can me believe in me? You're really not helping. <laughs> Please, Sam. All right. But Jordan. Yeah? Don't fuck it up. Oh my God, what if this doesn't work? That Danish prince was wrong. We should never have taken the risk. Hold on, it's actually working. The words are reappearing. You're doing it, Jordan. How are you still alive? Oh, it's that lovely high archivist. Why did you think we'd be dead? You went through the doors, right? Oh, duh. And you survived? Were you trying to kill us? But of course. You were meant to be eaten by a vampire. You were meant to be the first to die in the Hunger Games. And you were meant to be bored to death by Hamlet. Oh, no, we went through different doors and we all changed for the better. I guess that's my fault for not labelling the doors. Well, now our friend is rewriting our book and he's going to stop this place from being destroyed. So that's good news, isn't it? Did no one listen to my song? I hate it here. I hate books and I hate you three. Give me that book. Don't you dare. I won't let you come between. We will be your dirty scheme. Stop right there. I know you don't care what's at stake. You should watch the steps you take. I believe that Jordan can save us all. A leap of faith isn't much of a risk. Time to twist, not stick. Like evil Knievel approaching the ramp, it's time to start the show. This is our destiny. You're in the way. We're not the same. We've all been changed. Except for him, but ignore that. This is our destiny. You cannot change. We will succeed. We've all we need. Join us while you got time. Yeah, I'm not really a people person. I'm better off on my own. Join our team. of literature and the universe. I promise you a path to a better life. Come on! Don't think twice. Because we could go down in history as the saviours of the world. This is our destiny. It's yours as well. You don't want death. I just 
need one more minute. I'm almost at the end, just this tiny. We'll sing it one more time. One more for love. And when he's done, our fears will shun. The day is one, two, three, four. This is our destiny. This is our path. Uh, I'll finish now. This is how, yes, we have saved the world. Jordan, you've done it. You've closed the black hole. You saved us. Oh, yeah. We're saved. I realise now I never wanted to die. Well, I hope you've learned your lesson. I have. I will happily return to Gattegar. Actually, book. Jordan, could you and change I, that last time and back? Again, not trust sure. strangers who are clearly, clearly so kind and that, talented. Why is the black and I look forward to an eternity of reading books because while most are terrible, there are the occasions. See ya! Woo! Who needs to shush now? <laughs> okay, you can change that line back. She told me to shush, Ali. And she nearly destroyed the world. She told me to shush. You're coming back to me now. Sam, did you murder someone? Blackout. Lights up. Ali, Jordan and Sam are back at Flimsy's. You're back. You did it. You saved all of literature. <laughs> and humanity, the world and the universe, you know, as we know it, Professor. Yes, yes, I suppose, but literature. Professor Wick, we should probably tell you straight away. While we were down there, something happened to the High Archivist. Ah, oh, the High Archivist. The single being that stops the literary world from becoming a complete mess. Yeah, them. Uh, well... They slipped and fell and now they're gone. What? <laughs> what? I hope that's not going to be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> but now there will be no categorization, no definition of books, no genre. There will be nothing to stop a child from reading the most terrifying slasher horror or a pervert from reading Winnie the Pooh. Oh, glorious day! I'm sorry, Professor. No longer will my erotic novels be confined to the top shelf. You are free, little book. No one will ever find you lowbrow or badly written. What? Oh. Blank! Oh yeah, the, uh, that's the other thing we were going to mention. We we didn't manage to save all the books. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot of books to save. There's only three of us. If anything, you're to blame. You opened the black hole. As I said, no one's to blame. <laughs> the Iliad, Tess of the Durbervilles, Twilight New Moon. These are all blank! Just how many books did you manage to save? Well, we, we managed to bring back our book. Your awful book. Well, no, but I rewrote it, so it's not awful anymore. You know, now it's just average. Maybe not man book prize winning, but it'll get into the Richard and Judy book club. Jordan saved the world, Professor. How many times? I don't care about the world. What of the literary greats? They're all gone. Well, we did save the greatest book of all time. Oh, thank goodness. I don't think I could go on without the Great Gatsby abridged. <laughs> well, I've got... I've got some bad news, Flimsy. That book was also destroyed. I think what Sam meant when he said he, we managed to save the greatest book of all time is that we managed to save our book, which is now technically, if you think about it, the greatest book of all time. Yes. No, 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 no. Oh, oh God, this can't be happening. No, wait, it's fine. I just have to write out all of these books from memory. I can remember the start to The Great Gatsby Abridged. In my younger and more vulnerable years, my father gave me some advice that I've been turning over in my mind ever since. This shit is bananas. B-A-N-A-N... Oh, no! 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 <laughs> <laughs> well, plenty seem to tell that quite well. I like it rich! Ali, what was that all about? Sometimes, you gotta take a risk, Sam. I'm not sure this is one of those risks. Something tells me we're going to set the literary world on fire. Ali takes out a lighter. No, burning the best book of all time isn't taking a risk, Ali. Isn't it? 
She sets fire to the Great Gatsby abridged. <laughs> you know what this means, don't you? <coughs> this is the best thing ever written As there's nothing at all left in the literary canon Aside from our book, it's banging This will be the book that starts it all again A literal titan amongst men starts one. Probably George R. R. Martin. But till then this book is undeniably the greatest thing in history. Come see what we mean. Cause there's nothing else to read. There's nothing else. So put this on your shelf. Cause there's nothing